I'm Dr. Tony Nettleman. We're talking about types of land descriptions. There are all kinds of descriptions we have available to us. We've got meets and bounds, lot and block, public land system, hybrids of any two of those three choices, and they can even come in different forms, right? You can have graphic descriptions, textual descriptions, oral descriptions in some cases, all kinds of different ways. Land descriptions, written words or graphics that describe the geographic location and bundle of rights within the parcel. Well, this is just a fancy way of saying we've got to tell people where are the boundaries of the property. And once we let them know where are the boundaries of the property, then we can insert that description in a deed, easement, patent, land certificate, or anything else. But all of these documents, if you didn't have a land description, you wouldn't have a valid conveyance. So land descriptions are absolutely essential to any type of land conveyance. There's really two types of forms or two forms of descriptions. We've got the textual form in written form, and we have a graphic form that is in the form of a survey plat or something similar. Our first kind, the written word, is the most popular by far probably. And the written word basically does exactly what our title says. We describe property using letters, words, and phrases. And these phrases are absolutely essential. You know, what's the difference between beginning at a point and commencing at a point? Well, commencing means the point is off the property, and beginning at a point means that the point begins on the subject parcel. Essential. What about if we said something like we used a period instead of a semicolon? I had a case years ago in uh, middle Florida, south Florida, and the surveyor made the mistake of using periods instead of semicolons, and that small grammatical change led to a three-year lawsuit and hundreds of thousands of dollars of money. So remember, be very careful when you're using the written word because you've got to make sure that you're writing it correctly and you're using not just the proper words, but also the proper syntax and grammar as well. Our second type of description is the graphic descriptions. And graphic depictions of land descriptions are very popular in land subdivisions. Have you ever seen a property deed written out in textual form for a subdivision? No, of course not. You've got the subdivision plat, and the plat is the original creating document. And that plat is what leads all of the retracing surveyors. That's how the retracing surveyors follow in the footsteps of the original surveyor. So in places that are developed as subdivisions, graphic plats are the most popular. After we have our two types of descriptions, written words and graphics, we've also got to talk about our three types of land tenure systems. Remember, that these three systems can also be kind of interchangeable because we could have a uh, public land description, the northwest quarter of section 10 township range Meridian, but we could also say uh, beginning at the northwest corner of section 10 township range Meridian, go 500 feet, go 300 feet, go 1,000 feet. So you can start off with one type of system and then use another type to kind of uh, zoom in on the property. Let's go over all three of these types of descriptions and let's see how they differ in terms of setup, descriptions, and all that good stuff. The first type is meets and bounds. And I love this these uh, clip art pieces because the first thing we have is meets. Meets is measurements. 500 feet, 200 feet, 10 chains. But meets could also be bearings. Go north 89 degrees west. Go 239 degrees based on a north azimuth. So meets means measurements. We've also got bounds. Bounds are objects. 
Objects could be natural, streams, rivers, mountaintops, tops of hills, but they could also be artificial objects. And artificial objects include things like rebar, pipes, truck axles, Jack Daniels bottles, whatever you think. The second type of system we have is the public land survey system. And the public land survey system is based on a systematic framework. When we talk about the public land survey system, we talk about special terms such as townships, ranges, sections, quarter sections. All of these guys are what is called aliquot parts. And within each township, of the public land system, we've got a series of 36 sections that were all created at the exact same point in time. In this case, let's just remember that the public land survey system is based on aliquot parts, and we talk about parts of sections, sections, townships, and ranges, etc. Last but not least, the lot and block. In the lot and block, we have subdivisions, which are our main body, blocks, at least one per subdivision, and lots, at least one per subdivision, one to many. Let's take a look at a graphic version of a subdivision. To begin with, we have our subdivision, and the subdivision is the biggest piece, and that's the whole drawing you see right here. Zoom in one layer from a subdivision, and you have a block. Blocks are typically separated by roads. So if you see here, if we had to cut up this subdivision in terms of roadways. So in this example, we probably have four blocks because there are four independent sets of lots that are each separated by a roadway. And in subdivisions, we treat roadways as like water and we treat blocks as islands because we never give the excess or deficiency from one block to another block. And finally, the smallest unit of measure, the smallest unit in a lot and block system is obviously the lot. And the lots are individually owned, bought, and sold.